Oh, I was supposed to say something. Oh, let's do a retake. <laughs> Greetings, friends! In the last vlog that we did, titled, Who Inspires You?, we featured two fellow homesteaders from White House on the Hill and Holler Homestead. And in that vlog, if you make sure, if you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. And in that vlog, they talked about who inspired them, who were the most influential people in their lives in getting their homestead started. And in this vlog, we're going to do another segment of who inspires you. This time, we're going to feature a fellow market gardener, someone who has taken the profitable urban farming course online, just like I have from Curtis Stone. He's also been, this gentleman has also been on Diego Footer's podcast, Permaculture Voices. This gentleman owns and operates Flavorful Farms in British Columbia, Canada, and he services a number of local grocery stores in his area, providing them with fresh bagged greens from his farm. And here he is answering the question, who are your most influential people in getting your farm started? And here is Scott. Today, my buddy Mike Dixon from Big Pond Farm has a question for me. And Mike wanted to know, who were my most influential teachers when I was starting up my farm? This is a fun question for me to answer because I get to take a little trip down memory lane. I'll tell you a little story about how I started my farm because each little piece kind of leads into the next piece. And I'm actually surprised at how many people have helped me out along the way. And that's part of why I like uh, doing this YouTube is because that's a... Uh, I think it's just my attempt at giving a little bit back. Originally, I found out about permaculture. And I got this big old book. And uh, that led me to getting a whole bunch of other books. Whoa, that's a lot of books. So I could try to learn about farming. I was trying to teach myself through reading. I ended up doing a permaculture design certificate with Jesse Lemieux out of Pacific Permaculture. And that's what really started my whole path because Jesse is the one who told me about this book, The Market Gardener by J.M. Fortier. Uh, this book was really the first book that made me realize that I might actually want to start a vegetable farm because before I thought that I wanted to start a farm, but I wasn't really sure what it was going to consist of because I wanted to have a farm, but I also wanted to make money on my farm if I could. And this was the first book that made me think, Maybe I can do that. So thank you, J.M. That was very kind of you. That was a pretty good way to start out. So <clears throat> I was trying to figure out about this market gardening thing. It was the first time I ever even heard the word market garden. It sounded crazy. So I was looking for uh, podcasts with this guy, Jean Martin. I was looking for podcasts that he had done. I typed in my podcast player and I found out about this podcast called Permaculture Voices, ran by Diego Footer. Didn't you meet Diego too? Yep, sure did. <laughs> so I started listening to Diego's podcast and Diego had so much great content about um, starting a farm business and what it was like to get started. And Diego actually had this one segment on his show called The Urban Farmer with this guy named Curtis Stone. In the summer of 2015, I found out that I was going to be losing my job and I knew I wanted to start my farm, but I still didn't have all the pieces. Turns out that this Curtis Stone guy that I had heard on Diego's podcast lived only two and a half hours away from me. So I set up a consultation with him. So around the same time that I went up there, Curtis had just launched his own online course called Profitable Urban Farming. So I signed up to do that as well. That those were the main people that were in line. Um, so just to recap, uh, Jesse at Pacific Permaculture that taught me all about permaculture design, set me on a really good path, ended up leading me to J.M. Fortier who really showed me that it could be possible. It was going to be hard, but could be possible. People were making money. Then Diego was a tremendous influence on me. Uh, I have got, there was so many days that I was driving to work listening to Diego's podcast. Uh, I actually had the chance to meet him and I told him, I said, it, it's, <clears throat> it's weird when you meet someone that you've been listening to their podcast because like Diego was driving to work with me every day for three or four months. And it's, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's just a funny thing that happens. <clears throat> and then uh, Diego actually ended up having me on his podcast twice. 
that was a neat opportunity. It was really fun. Uh, so I'm really grateful to him for all of that and for um, indirectly introducing me to Curtis. And then Curtis Stone is being the number one influence on my farm. There are a lot of farms that don't make money. If you're gonna take advice from people, you should be taking advice from the few people that are actually making money. And um, yeah, Curtis's farm has had an, a huge impact on my farm. Um, it's pretty much the only reason that I've been able to farm. When I was ready to start doing my farm and I had a thousand questions to ask, at the exact same time, Curtis had made an online course that was all the information that I wanted. Exact same time, those things were happening. So it was very, it was definitely like from mythology when the student is ready, the teacher appears. That was a really neat experience. Uh, he's had a really big impact on my farm from the layout of my farm to what I sell, the crops, my revenue streams. Uh, I've got to be on Curtis's YouTube channel now a couple times. Uh, and I've just been really grateful for those opportunities. And, and then I would say my last biggest influence has been uh, everyone else in the market gardening community. When you're first starting out, it feels like you're alone because <laughs> you're out there in the field doing everything by yourself. Uh, and it seems like no one understands, but there's this whole little community on Instagram and on Facebook groups, and you get to meet really cool people like uh, Mike Dixon and his family at Big Pong Farm, Lacey and Sayla and Micah and, uh, oh, I forget the last little guy's name. Josiah, nailed it. Seeing other people making sacrifices for their families or trying to start businesses, changing the food system, trying to get more people started farming. It's all very inspiring and awesome and it makes me want to continue to produce great content and have good work and produce good produce. The community, I think, has had a really profound influence on my life. Those are some of my, those are, I know I gave you a whole bunch, but those are some of my biggest influences on my farm. Thank you, Scott, for joining us. Yes, and make sure you check out Scott's channel, YouTube channel, at Scott Hebert on YouTube. Also, he has a really neat Instagram page. He posts a lot of inspiring and just motivational quotes about farming and agriculture. And check out his Instagram page at Flavorful Farms. That's pretty neat that Scott also remembered all of your names. That was pretty neat. Yeah. He remembered all our names. <laughs> <laughs> and Scott also mentioned taking advice from people who are actually making money. Yes, we, we can get inspired by a lot of different people who are doing a lot of neat things, and that, that is very good. But when we're taking things to the next level and whatever we want to be successful in, let's make sure that we take advice from the people who are actually being successful. That's very important in life. You want to make sure you're taking advice for somebody who is being successful in the area that you want to be successful in. Like if you want to ride a horse and you want to learn to ride a horse, yeah. you want to learn from somebody who is pretty good at riding a horse, don't you? Yep. You don't want to take some advice from somebody who has never ridden a horse before, would you? That'd be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it for now. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and sign up to receive a notification each time we release a new video. See you next time.